Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog, and I am here with Hug Chair outside of, um, outside of Golden Apple Comics, and I'm sitting in the Spider-Man chair, and uh, it's really comfortable. It's like a massager. You can check out, there's Iron Man and Captain America here, and uh, they're called Body Friends. They basically just sit in them. They massage your back, they massage your legs. Like, this thing is so awesome. I totally needed this with all the back pain I've been having lately, and all the stuff that I've been going on health-wise. This feels really really good uh so uh i don't know i think patreon backers you might be uh helping me save up money to buy one of these because this is really awesome so uh today's episode we're going to review venomize number five so without further ado let's get right into it all right and here we are with venomize number five i have the copy right here and as always let's give out that digital code boom right there on the screen enjoy that if you're out there first person to put that code in gets the final issue of Venomized, where it says, whether we live or die, this ends now. And uh, I honestly hope that is true, uh, because I was really a defender of this series when it first started, and I really liked the first issue and thought, all right, it's not super great, but I feel like it's setting something up, and it, it could have interesting payoffs, and a couple of these characters, even though it's a you know a rushed miniseries, uh, I feel like it could maybe leave a little bit uh, of ramifications for some of the characters. At least I was hoping it would. I thought maybe it would change some of the X-Men a little bit, maybe make me more interested to read Colin Bunn's X-Men book, to go back into X-Men Blue and read some more. I did pick up X-Men 25, and I'll probably give a digital code away for that soon, too, because that actually had some pages with Venom in it, and it acts as like a, a, a bridge story between uh, the end of Poison X and the beginning of Venomize. So that was kind of surprising. So I might give that code out in a future episode soon. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, but as far as this book, I was really happy to see Iban Coelho come back and draw this uh, this issue because he wasn't on the last issue. And that really like took my beer goggles off, as I said. And it made me kind of see that I was given this book a little bit of a pass uh, because I just love the artwork so much, which happens. I mean, comic books are a visual medium. And if you get wrapped up in the artwork, it, it can uh, make you forgive the story a little bit because that's ultimately comic books are a visual medium, like I said. So I get that way sometimes. I get really wrapped up in the artwork. And, you know, as a former artist myself, someone who's trying to get back into it, I really appreciate really good artwork. And I thought Ibon's stuff just really spoke to me and it, it added a fun style to Venom that I really don't see that often. And uh, and it was a style that I kind of dug. And I was like, you know what? I like this. It's It screams fun popcorn flick and I'm in the mood for something like that right now. Uh, but unfortunately, the story couldn't hold. Uh, the story just kept dipping each issue. Each issue got worse and worse and worse for me. And this one definitely being, this is not my least favorite issue. I think that goes to issue four because a bond didn't draw it. So this definitely is saved by a bond's artwork, but the storyline is just not good. And there's some things we can't help but talk about because they might have effects later on. I just hope those little threads that Cullen Bunn left are not picked up by him later and picked up by somebody else. And I hate to go, you know, be so negative on that guy because, you know, I've talked to him before online uh, back, you know, years ago, and he's a nice guy. And I know it's not easy to write comics, and I know it's not easy to put out a weekly series at that. And I know someone who is, I, as myself, I had trouble ending uh, stories before in the past. And so I know the pressure and, and how hard it can be, but even factoring all that in, I really didn't like this issue. Like I just really didn't. Uh, it 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 was it was what I was afraid was going to happen. In issue one, it was a good setup. I thought issue two and three, I was like, all right, these are the action issues. These are where we're not going to get a lot of story, and they're going to set up the MacGuffins. And then four and five need to like pay those things off, pay those setups off from issue one, and then wrap this up and not like in a nice little bow, but just have like a nice organic pattern to the ending. And really, it doesn't have that at all. The last three pages or four pages of this wrap up the entire story. It's like that quick. Uh, it's almost like they were like, oh, we ran out of pages or we couldn't do a jumbo size issue, maybe like they wanted to do. I don't know what the circumstances were, but they needed at least 10 more pages in this book to give a nice organic feel to the ending and to pay off some of these uh, moments with real emotion because I really didn't care about uh, Kid Kaiju's monsters. Like, I don't know about that character. He's kind of new to me. Um, I know he's from uh, some other stuff that Cullen Bunn has done and uh, what was it, Monsters Unleashed and things like that. And I haven't really dove into that, so I didn't have a, a connection to that character. So when he showed up and he was supposed to be the big MacGuffin that could fight back against the enemy, against the poisons, he turned out to not really do that too much, and his his big threat that he created, these big monsters, Scrag and a couple of these other guys, uh, you know, Scrag gets turned into a symbiote and then gets turned into a poison and then uh, dies fighting the heroes. And Anti-Venom's big moment in the book, I was like, oh, what's what's he going to do? Is he going to take down Thanos? Is he going to have this big moment? His big moment was taking down Scrag, and I was like, 
Okay, and then like Scrag died, and of course Kid Kaiju's like, no, I'll make this better, I'll make this better, and you can tell you're supposed to feel something there, and maybe some of you did who liked this character, but I felt nothing, and I was like, all right, this was just a waste of page count to me, and bringing in Kid Kaiju actually didn't amount to anything. It just, it just, there was the setup was there, and there was no real payoff for me. Um, the Thanos thing, every you know, all the villains get taken down because Jean Grey, uh, the one MacGuffin that we weren't sure, like it was like it was there in the first issue, and then Poison X, oh, Jean's mind might still be in there. Well, of course she's super powerful, and she breaks out of the poisons, and and she uh, you know fights back and turns them against each other, and then they all drop dead. Uh, all the little white poisons and then anything who was infected also drops dead too minus a handful so at the end of the story we learn that carnage uh like one version of wolverine i think and maybe a couple other poisons are still out there and i'm hoping peter parker poison is still out there because i would like him to become an, an enemy and part of venom's rogues gallery moving forward because i think venom needs a rogues gallery and we already have scorpion going in there uh, from the latest book with mike costa and we have lee price and a couple other people i would like to see some of that go in there so hopefully poison peter parker is still around uh, uh, but in this one, also real Peter Parker wearing a black suit gets stabbed through the chest by Carnage, uh, who's now a poison. And Carnage says, I'm not linked to them. They think they linked me to the rest of the poisons, but I'm not. And I just want to kill all of you guys. Now I have new powers, new poison powers. So I guess Cletus Cassidy is a poison moving forward because he lives at the end of this story and he does stab Peter through the chest. And, and he gets uh, Venom's big move is, hey, let's open a portal or open a uh, have danger, the the you know, the X-Men's ship AI thing. Let's have it open up a hole in the wall and have it suck Carnage and Peter out into space. And then Venom's like, hey, don't worry, that suit will keep you safe, Peter. And you're just like, that's it? That's Peter's big moment is he gets stabbed and gets sucked out into space? So there's no, like friendship teaming up thing between him and Venom like they go to fight Carnage and then instantly Spider-Man gets stabbed and gets sucked out into space and that's it it's like that's it you don't get to see Peter doesn't get to see Venom act like a real hero and said Venom sacrifices Spider-Man potentially uh to you know get Carnage out of there it's like you don't have Peter looking at him going Eddie just do it like you know like release me release me into space like have some kind of emotion there have something so those characters have something that matters between them uh but they don't do that in this issue either and then of course all the poisons get turned on they get destroyed venom grabs dr doom and prevents him from stopping uh, phoenix from wiping all the poisons out so uh to me it was just a rushed issue and if you're wondering why i skipped a lot of the details it's because there's not really that many details in the story i thought this was pretty bland and then at the end when they wrap it all up they just in like one panel say, oh, we got to take all the symbiotes that are on Earth now. And then the next panel is them being brought back to Clintar and dropped off. And then uh, I guess Alchemex helps de you know, program them because some of them were, you know, turned into or malformed to do specific things or be resistant to sound and all that. I guess Alchemex hit the reset button on that. Then they dropped them all. I, I would think the Clintars would want these new powers and not have those weaknesses, but I guess they don't have a choice in the matter and they get sent back to Clintar the way they used to be and everything gets set on a reset button. And even Scrag, who you thought died, comes back at the end and flies around as like a little gnat on the monster island that uh, Kid Kaiju's on. Uh, so again, nothing has any ramifications. Jean Grey, we're not She's back in her human body. She says, I don't know if this is human or not, but let's see what happens moving forward. So maybe that will have some kind of payoff in X-Men Blue. Uh, but all the other stuff, you know, was just out there and just kind of ended. And it, I felt it was just, just a really piss poor job. I mean, luckily I like the artwork and it kept me going. And I hope that Bond comes back with a different writer and they do something with Venom later and bring back Poison Peter Parker and maybe to take the poison out of carnage and get Cletus back to his normal serial killing, you know, red symbiote self. I hope that happens at some point uh, because eventually the suit's going to have to come off. The carnage suit's going to have to come off Norman Osborn eventually. So hopefully it finds its way back to Cletus and we get that character back um, the way he needs to be in the comics. And hopefully if the movie brings him into the movie, carnage in the movie, we will get that in the comics. Uh, so until then, you know, I'm going to probably stay away from anything else that uh, Colin Bunn does with Venom maybe i don't know i'm a venom fan so i'll probably read it anyway uh but colin I, I i i don't know what to say i mean you're a good writer and i've seen you do good you've done great on venom before with agent venom uh and i that's why i thought you were going to give flash thompson a big moment in this you set up all these MacGuffins, and then you end up using gene gray and just skipping all those other three things kid kaiju anti-venom like you put them all to the side and you and you just went forward with a Jean Grey thing, which you didn't even really kind of set up in the first issue. So um, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't feeling it. I, I didn't really like this run. And I was really bummed because I think you had a great artist and I think you utilized him very well in Venomverse, 
but I, I don't think he did here. And that's just, you know, I'm, I, I hate to be that negative because I do try to keep things positive on this channel and I know how hard it is to do your job. Um, and maybe not even your job because you've written things that are bigger than anything I've ever written. So I can't imagine the pressure you went through to write this story, but you know, I didn't like it. It just wasn't for me. Uh, but hopefully you guys out there, may, maybe some of you do like it. Uh, I do have two full sets, one through five of this book, the digital codes, and we will give them out in future episodes. So be on the lookout for that. I'll probably give them out around my birthday, which is May 11th. Uh, but I have issues one through five, the whole digital code, and I'll pick one person to give that to as a special thank you to you guys out there and uh, for watching my videos. So sorry that this was uh, not my favorite uh, you know, run on the book, but I definitely read worse for sure. Uh, but let me know what you think. If you think differently than me or if you have the same feelings, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.